What he does to it, he does to himself. Fucking beautiful, Chief Seattle. Hell yeah, that's 1854. Awesome. Prophets. I hope you guys know that. I do realize that. Imagine yeah. nothing to kill or die for. Hell yeah. I'm winning. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> These are fucking awesome. All at Hippie Gypsy. That's it. I'm happy to watch. But we do have a keyboard player. My that's our only problem. My
Margarito! Margarito! Margarito's in his vantage mic check! He's got it in his vantage mic check! Solidarity! Go to the chat in Spanish will be. The chat in Spanish will be. Arpaio. Arpaio. Afuera. Afuera! Get out. Arpaio! Afuera! Arpaio! 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 Afuera! Arpaio! Afuera!
because uh, I want to say of an incident that happened a year ago, and it has to do with immigration, but the police department in Elmer, Arizona. I was called by a, by a young girl, me llamaron, una, una muchacha joven, and she told me that her cousin was stopped by the Elmer Arch Police Department, and yes, he did not have papers. He was asked for his social security. La policía lo paró y le pidió por su, su social security. And um, because he, his, he was on his bicycle, he decided to either move out of the state or something. But there's a kind of harassment, you know, that así no maltratan a los hispanos a veces. There's a harassment that you get, racial profiling. And uh, he decided to move out of the state. And uh, the Elmer Arch Police Department, you know, I don't know, asking for social security. Quería dejar algo. I do want to say something. Obviously, like Salvador Reza has said, if you're here without papers, but estás aquí sin papeles, all you got to do is tell the powers that be. You just tell them your, uh, your address and your name, and there's a chance that they will let you stay. In, you know, you fight it, they will abuse you in jail for maybe four or five months. And I want to say that to my fellow uh, people, whoever they are here without papers, whatever, whatever country they're from. Sin papeles, país no lo tienes. Nomás dices que en donde vives, tu dirección, y tu nombre, y pueda que un juez te deje que te quedes aquí. And I think we should fight the oppression of all working people, and also the, the, the racial profiling in this state. And I don't see how all this corruption of these, these elected officials in the state of Arizona, and they get away with it. Son corruptos, y todo el mundo ha sido en Arizona, y no está bien. It is not right, we have to vote, we gotta push them out. That's what we got to do. True story. True stories. As a child. As a child. I went through major abuse. I went through major abuse. At eight years old. At eight years old. I ran away to a daycare facility. I ran away to a daycare facility. I told them stories of horrible things going on at home. I told them stories of horrible things going on at home. They called the police. They called the police. The police took me home. The police took me home. And told my parents to teach me a lesson. And told my parents to teach me a lesson. Wow. Thank you, Officer Beckstrand. Thank you, Officer Beckstrand. Coming to Phoenix. Coming to Phoenix. Looking for a job. Looking for a job. Couldn't find one. Couldn't find one. Went to a freeway ramp. Went to a freeway ramp. Held a sign saying needed on odd jobs. Out of sign saying you got jobs. Got stopped by the cops. Got stopped by the cops. When I was being thrown in the vehicle. When I was being thrown in the vehicle. I informed them I have a problem with my joints. I informed them I have a problem with my joints. The officer informed me. The officer informed me. We all have excuses. We all have excuses. And shoved harder. And shoved harder. I am now in a wheelchair. I am now in a wheelchair. Don't know that cop's name. But thank you too. Thank you too. I am one of the four people. I am one of the four people that was arrested last night. That was arrested last night for supposedly camping. Supposedly camping. When I was not. When I was not. I was sitting in front of the computer. I was sitting in front of the computer. Updating our Cyber 99 people. Updating our Cyber 99 people on what was going on. On what was going on. I was told, I was told by, an MCSO officer by an MCSO officer that there is no right to freedom of speech. That there is no right to freedom of speech. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, his name is uh, Michael uh, Isham, and he's in the uh, Maricopa County Fourth Avenue Jail. It was an incident that happened maybe about a year ago, the where he had went through some calls that the uh, police claimed that he had done, and. Uh, they uh, stopped him, and when they asked him to get out of his car, he got out of his car, and uh, um, they uh, put the handcuffs on him, and as he said, they was too tight, he kind of snatched his hand about, and they jumped on him, and they beat him up real bad. The pictures uh, would demonstrate the uh, brutality uh, behavior, uh, whatever you want to call it, whatever they were doing at night. But like I said, once again, his name is uh, Michael uh, Isham, and Isham is spelled I-S-H-A-M, and his booking number is, uh, 694490.
So if anybody get a chance, please write. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yesterday, while we were doing jail support for the four people arrested for supposedly camping, uh, we met two women that got released from jail. They were not a part of Occupy Phoenix, but they soon will be. Uh, when they got released, they came and sat with us and told us about a woman that is currently held at 4th Avenue Jail. She's in there for not paying a traffic ticket. Holy shit. She fell asleep and started her period. The corrections officers made her sit there covered in blood. She had blood up to here on her shirt and down to her knees. They then told her that she needed to fix her shirt because her cleavage was showing and she was handcuffed. She then said, well, you know, I'm handcuffed and I'm covered in blood. Why are you worried about my cleavage? And they told her if she wanted to get mouthy, she should go to solitary. I don't know how a woman can sit there letting another woman bleed all over herself. As she moved down the rows of chairs, she left blood in each chair spot and other people had to sit in it. This woman felt such deep embarrassment. I really would like to know who she is and help her with legal support. Yes! yes. This is not okay. We cannot let other people go nameless. Go through this stuff alone. We are here to help everyone. Come on. Pass the mic. My name is Shawn Michael Bryce Geddes. Uh, I'm transgender. I was born in a female body. And I was being chased by a man with a baseball bat. And when I called the cops to tell them that I had been assaulted by a man with a baseball bat, the police officer came, blamed me, threatened to cite me for making false claims. Even though we had pictures of the man chasing our, our car away with his baseball bat. He said, you fucking transgender people, get out of Arizona. Fucking tranny. This is, a, this is harassment. It happens all the time. This is why my friends are afraid to call the police. My friends have been beaten by police. My friends have been raped by police because they're transgender. We have some police officers here with us today who stand with us against police violence. Yeah. Thank you! Because of police officers like them, I have someone I can call if I'm being mistreated. I'd like to remember all the police officers who stand up for people who are being hurt by others and who are here with us today against the violence that's being perpetrated by their, their co-workers. I'd also like to say that um, Sheriff Joe's jail sucks. Yeah. 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 Sheriff yeah. Joe needs to be recalled. Yeah. 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 Gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender people in jail is horrendous. Every marginalized community, some people say when they go to jail, oh, it was nothing, I was there for a day and it was nothing. I'm sorry, but if you're white and straight, it's a different experience. I love you all. I love my white straight brothers and sisters. Love you, too. I love everybody in every color, every gender, every nationality, every age, etc. But let's try and stand up for our people of marginalized society, marginalized parts of society who are being even more abused than some of us who have been facing the police recently. And let's remember that this has been going on for a very, very, very long time. I was in West Oakland not but a month ago. I was in West Oakland not but a month ago. Me and my older sister were walking down the street. Me and my older sister were walking down the street. Four men in a car came out of their car with AK-47s. Four men in a car came out of their car with AK-47s. They said, let's blap these people, let's blap these people. They said, let's blap these people, let's blap these people. Me and my sister ran. We saw three squad cars on the corner of the street and they did nothing. Me and my sister ran. We saw three squad cars on the side of the street and they did nothing. Thank you. Thank you. That's the mud. I don't want to tell my story, I just have one thing to say. This is Sheriff Joe. I am not a crook. <laughs> I want to take this opportunity to question the Phoenix PD. PD. To question the Phoenix PD. My question is, my question is, how is the community? How is the community supposed to trust you? Supposed to trust you when a mother, when a mother calls the police, calls the police to intervene, to intervene 
only to have her son, only to have her son killed, killed by an officer of the Phoenix Police Department, by an officer of the Phoenix Police Department in South Phoenix. In South Phoenix. That is the question. That is the question. How are we supposed to trust you? How are we supposed to trust you? When you have office, uh, when you have people, or when you have people like Officer Chrisman, like Officer Chrisman, that killed, that killed Daniel Rodriguez, Daniel Rodriguez in South Phoenix. In South Phoenix. And if I could get a chance, I want to say in Spanish. Uh, quiero tomar la oportunidad de este evento para hacerle una pregunta a la policía de Phoenix. La pregunta es. ¿Cómo, uh, ¿Cómo cómo puede ser que la comunidad va a tener confianza en el departamento de policía de Phoenix cuando una madre le llama a la policía por ayuda y el resultado es que la policía mata a su hijo de, de esta madre? Es lo que pasó en su Phoenix, un oficial con el apellido de Chrisman mató a un joven que se llama Daniel Rodríguez y dejó a una madre sin un hijo. Es, es, esos son ejemplos de lo que está pasando aquí en Phoenix. Debemos de reconocer esto y hacerle esa pregunta a la policía. ¿Cómo podemos confiar si hay oficiales de este tipo? Muchas gracias. Mike check. Mike check. I want to follow. I want to follow. And ask the Phoenix PD a question. And ask the Phoenix PD a question. More specifically, more specifically, I want to ask that smirking bastard Swiker a question. Why did the Phoenix PD and Detective Mark Swiker Detective Mark Swiker lie to the legal team? Lie to the legal team? I want you by Phoenix.
Avenue in Madison and take a look at this concentration camp they got down there. Yeah. Yeah. I suggest that we go down there and occupy this place that they call Cass. In yeah. fact, it's a concentration camp full of people that they constantly, that the government is constantly filling for the all kinds of medications and stuff and, and cross-medicating people. All of this stuff has a tendency to destroy you from the inside out. Amen. You go down there and you know what you'll see? You'll see a concentration camp with 18-foot fences. Right across the street is a graveyard. Where they got people living is a mortuary. And it's full every night. Also, the parking lot is full. It is very cold. These people have no compassion, no love, no understanding, no respect. They disrespect the American people. They disrespect the Constitution of the United States. And they use the law to mistreat the American people. I protest and I object to all of that. And I know you do too. Yeah! Oh, my name is Caroline. About, about uh, four years ago, the night before Thanksgiving, about 10.30 at night, I was laying in bed sleeping with my wife. And uh, I don't know what happened. I just woke up. My dog was freaking out. When I looked outside, I didn't see anything. It was dark outside. So I went back into the bedroom looking for my wife, and she wasn't there. And I heard her come through the front door. And when she came through the front door, she said, I think I've been shot. So I called 911, expecting to get some help from the police. Well, about 20 cops showed up that night. They had my door wide open. My heater was on. Obviously, it was cold. It was November 26, 11 o'clock at night. I asked them to shut my front door. They told me it was a crime scene. They couldn't shut my front door. I told them the crime happened outside. Uh, for two hours, they harassed me, asked me the same damn question. I gave them the same damn answer while they ransacked my house and stole all my marijuana paraphernalia. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Marijuana. Which is not a drug. God said he gave us every green seed bearing plant for food. Woo. And I, I just want to say... Why would I want to call the cops again if I have an emergency so I could be harassed and become a victim? Fuck you, Phoenix PD! <laughs> this incident changed my perception of the police forever. On November 3rd, 2004, in Tucson, Arizona, the day after the election, there was a march on 4th Avenue. We were marching in the streets. And then Officer Paul Tosca of the Tucson Police Department started shooting people with pepper balls. One man was on the ground and he shot him with pepper balls from point blank range. And it was very bad what I saw. I had his pepper ball gun pointed in my direction. This type of incident goes on all the time. And it goes on certainly here in Phoenix and other cities. Last week at First Friday, a young man supposedly knocked down a barricade, a bicycle cop, ran after this man, tackled him like he was in a football game, and then the pepper spray started coming out. We love you, Branson! We love you, Branson. Why is these type of incidents happening? And stop the police brutality. Thank you. Thank you. When I was 14, my mom got in a relationship with an abusive man. I was young and I didn't know what to do, but my brother came and visited and he saw that there was something wrong. So he called the police and explained everything. And they ended up taking my mother to jail instead of this abusive van and left me with that abusive van for days until my mom got out of jail. I don't know why they did it, but 
Yeah, I was stuck with that abusive man for days. <laughs> and then they tried to put me in CPS and blame my mother on it. We love you. We love you. Say some words about um, who these police serve. And, uh, you know, some, someone recently said that they respect the law, and uh, I don't respect the law at all. I think if you take a, a law book and you look through it, and you look, at, look through how many of these laws actually protect us, and how many of these laws actually serve our interests, rather than just creating more work for them so that they can take more of our money, I think you'd be very surprised to find out that very few of those laws actually protect any of your rights. I mean, how does a law against against drug use that, that you choose, if you choose to put a drug in your body, that's your business. So how many people, you know, 86% of people in prisons are in prison for non-violent crimes. So who's, whose interest is that serving? Is that serving our interest in keeping us safe or is that keeping them in a job? It's keeping them in a job. And I just, I just, I just wanted to just uh, kind of remind people of that, that 99% uh, of what these people do is not protecting us. 99% of what they do is is micromanaging our our lives and finding little discrepancies, little tedious little ways that we're deviating from the, the, the standard normative behavior that they've decided that we have to we have to align ourselves around. And whenever and, 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 and whenever we deviate from that, you know, locking us up, finding us, hauling us off to court, that's what they do. They're they're, they're little nannies, they're little micromanagers, they don't protect us at all. I was pepper sprayed on first Friday. I have been harassed, neglected, and abused by police officers. But today, I'm not going to talk about police brutality. Today, I'm just going to tell my story. When I was three years old, I was molested by my great uncle. My family silenced it. No, no legal process ever occurred because of that. Over the next 21 years of my life, I was sexually assaulted and raped three other times. Not only did I not feel like I could go to the police, I didn't feel like I could go to my family. Now, after the 15th of October, I feel like I have someone I can go to. And I just want to thank all of you for that. We love you. We love you. We love you. My name is Pamela Senzi, and I don't need a people's mic. I'm here uh, representing architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth, a non-violent, science-based organization of experts and professionals who demand a new investigation into 9-11. And on their board of directors, there are a number of scientists, physicists. Uh, there's a huge body of professionals in the 9-11 truth movement. It is not a movement of uh, nut jobs. However, the reason that I want to speak to you as well is because I, I don't know how many of you are aware, please raise your hand if you're aware of the legislation that passed next last week, S-1867. <laughs> An egregious use of the state's power. Every American citizen, including all of the officers, all of the detectives, all of the individuals here, regardless of your walk in life, should be concerned when the United States of America has a Senate that 97% across the board voted to arrest and detain American citizens without charge, without a lawyer, without habeas corpus, without Miranda rights, to detain them indefinitely. They do not have to be charged. This should concern every American who loves the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights and who takes an oath, either in his heart or with his professional status, to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. This is a travesty. This is a travesty. During this vote, there were five senators. Senator Lindsey Graham, Senator Kelly Ayote from New Hampshire, Senator Cornyn from Texas, Senator Lieberman, 
and a senator from Georgia Bernie whose Sanders. name I forget. Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders. No, Bernie no, Sanders no. did not vote for this. He voted against. He was the only independent who did. These senators whose names I just mentioned fought to restore torture of American citizens who are arrested and detained without charge. Ooh. Ooh. This is Say a time. Say you said it. This Say is a time when all Americans should be aware of what America is becoming because without the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, which this legis which this legislation completely and wholly subverts, this is not America. This is not America. It's not America. With that legislation and with so much more, as has been pointed out, we need to stand together. Nonviolence. We have these pictures of. Mother Teresa, we have these pictures of Gandhi, of Cesar Chavez. Nonviolence is about awakening the enemy. Nonviolence is about reaching out. Nonviolence is about recognizing that those who oppress, those who oppose, those who abuse their power are sick. They are sick and they are acting out in their role because they are blind that they are really one of us that they are really part of humanity and that's what this is about that's right that's what this is about stay awake do your research and keep getting the message out all of you are beautiful and all of you in the spirit of humanity are part of something much greater than this darkness we will, we can overcome, and we will, because we stand with peace and truth. Just to set the record straight, in case nobody already knows this, I guess she didn't, that torture of American citizens is already going on if they're outside of the country. This has been going on for years. It usually happens, from what I heard, it usually happens to American citizens who are of a Middle Eastern um, I just have a message to you all. I'm sure a lot of you do know, a lot of you may not know that right now the United States has the world's largest prison population. Yes. 2.3 million Americans behind bars. Another 7.3 million Americans in some form of correction. You know, let out on some form of, of, of a release, but they're always supervised. Your, your analysis, ankle bracelets. Right now, how can we call ourselves the land of the free if we have the world's largest prison population? How can we call ourselves the land of the free if we have the world's largest prison population? That's right. You can't. Your home is a prison. This is a message to all of the police officers included. This is a non-violent movement. But how can you enforce the law when you know that we have the world's largest prison population? If you don't believe me, look it up, please. No disrespect. But people are dying in prisons. People are locked away from their families, locked away from their children. Children are growing up without parents because they are in prison for a non-violent drug offense. Granted, drugs, yeah, they are destructive, but however, it's not the best way to lock, it, lock us up. Right now, 80% of Americans are sharing less than 20% of the GDP. And eight out of the 10 of us are sharing less than 20% of the GDP. That's not very much of the pie to pass around. For, for the wealth as far as the economic division. I mean, if, if there's people with, with that much wealth disparity living off such small means, and the bottom ha half of us are, I mean, <laughs> you know, or the bottom half of us are sharing as much wealth as the 400 richest Americans, how can that, how can that be? They're not putting any of the 400 richest Americans in a cage for any of their actions. They're not putting any of the people who have abused Wall Street, their power, legislation, who rewrote the banking laws in the last 14 years in jail. Yeah. None of them none of them were paying any fines. I mean, I, I've never heard of I know that they paid some of them back, but still. How can, we, how can we let this economic injustice keep going? How can we let Arpaio keep doing what he's doing? There's been a lot of work against him, but for some reason we can't get him out yet. 
I think we need to talk to people. Talk to people you see on the street. Talk to your family members. Let them know. The media coverage of the 99% movement has been atrocious. They've called us rapists. They've called us this bums, vagabonds. Terrorists. They've called us terrorists. They've called us a number of different things. But people don't realize that this movement is much larger than just the 99% movement in the United States. More people around the world are pissed off at the United States and the economic policies jurisdicted and governed by Wall Street than people are inside the United States. We're very oblivious to it in comparison. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I know I told my story earlier, but this story that I'm going to tell you guys happened on Wednesday of last week at the uh, ALEC convention. If anyone doesn't know what ALEC is, it is the American Legislative Economic Committee. Exchange, exchange. Or exchange Council, sorry. They are a corporate ran lobbyist group that is making legislative acts for our legislator and somehow they're getting them past Congress. At that demonstration, we had multiple people that were pepper sprayed for peacefully demonstrating out there. We need to support these people that got sprayed with the pepper spray because they opened up for no reason on that group. Thank you all for being present. Thank you all for being present. As you can hear, there's a lot of accounts of injustice. Go to jail. And you will hear plenty. And you will hear plenty. There's plenty of stories. There's plenty of stories of people, of people getting, arrested getting arrested for something that they did not do. For something they did not do. This is not right. This is not right. Where's the justice? Where's the justice? We're all here. We're all here. Because of for one reason. For one reason. We know. We know that the system's broken. That the system's broken. This world needs us. This world needs us. The system, the system is meant to keep people, is meant to keep people suppressed. suppressed. Poverty, Poverty is profitable. Is profitable. Yeah, imprisonment, imprisonment is profitable. Is profitable. They, keep people's voices they keep people's voices in silence. silence. If you're a felon, if you're a felon you, cannot vote. you cannot vote. This isn't right. This isn't right. We all need, we all need to, realize to realize that we all have, we all have things, in common. things in common. We also have, we also have things, we don't things we don't agree upon. But let's focus, but let's focus on our commonality. On our commonality. The, system is broke. the system is broke. Let's fix it. Let's fix it. You are people! You 